All right, good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Taylor Clem with UF IFAS Extension, Nassau County. Um, and thank you all for joining us today for our program. It's all about snakes of Florida. Uh, today we have uh, Carl Schaefer is one of our Master Gardener volunteers. Um, he's gonna be helping do this presentation with us today. And like all of our programs, um, this is gonna be recorded. So we'll be able to put it up online uh, onto our YouTube channel so everyone can watch later. And I'll also follow up with an email with everyone that's registered with the different resources that are associated with today's program. Um, and throughout the program, feel free to put any of your questions in the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, and what we can do is I can help relay those questions to Carl. Uh, but anyways, thank you all very much. And Carl, feel free and uh, yeah. One thing that we're going to get do real quick. There it there is. There it is. And we have some things that we're going to be showing you all throughout the presentation as well. Uh, little examples of some stuff. And Carl, do you want me to turn the background off so it doesn't? Yeah, if you would, please. Perfect. All right. Thank you all very much. We'll get going. And uh, thank you, Carl. Sir, thank you, Taylor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Taylor indicated uh, my name is Carl Schaefer. I am a master gardener volunteer with Nassau County Extension. I also have 10 years of experience as a professional biologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Georgia Department of Natural Resources. I'm going to talk with you this morning about snakes and hopefully give you some information that you'll find interesting. And for those of you who have real uh, hesitancy about being around snakes, maybe this will help you be a little more comfortable. Anyway, well, let's get started. And uh, snakes are reptiles and they have scales and uh, they are not slimy. They are very, very smooth. And the reason for that, it helps them slide. Some of them have very rough scales, especially underneath, and that helps them climb. Uh, they're typically waterproof. Uh, they're war they're uh, cold-blooded. So they have to have certain minimum temperatures in order to move around and be active. And uh, they're active most of the time midday, but in Florida, our warm temperatures can get them acting all night, all day. It'll, it varies with the species and where they're located. And this is the time of year where we'll start to see uh, young snakes emerging from their nest where they've, uh, the eggs are hatching or the uh, adults are bearing live. So we have, we have a lot of snakes in Florida, we got great habitat for snakes. We got a lot of vegetation, we got warm temperatures, we've got moisture. We've got a lot of things that snakes eat. Uh, they've got good cover and uh, it's, it's a good snake habitat. It's not tropical, subtropical, and uh, there's really a lot of prey for them that keeps them alive. Now there are about 46 species of native snakes here. There are four non-native species. The three of those that are the most uh, problematic, Burmese python, North Africa python, and the boa constrictor. The Burmese python, and, and all these are a product of, of trade here and people that have either turned them loose or the snakes have escaped. And uh, I wanted to throw this out. I was looking through some data this morning. The Burmese python in Florida, the largest one was 26 feet long and weighed over 200 pounds. And that's, that's a big snake. It's a non-venomous snake. Uh, my father had an interaction with one of these in Burma in World War II. They were driving down a, a little dirt trail in a jeep he and his first sergeant and he came around a corner and they hit what they thought was a log and it flipped the jeep and they got out and it was a burmese python so they're a big snake i just wanted to throw that in just to have a little fun this morning uh there are only 
six of the 46 species of native snakes and non-native, and only six of them that are venomous, okay? Now, here, I'm gonna back up for a minute and explain venomous versus poisonous. If you eat a rattlesnake, you're not gonna die because they're not poisonous. If you get struck by a rattlesnake, you're gonna probably react because of the venom and the venom is injected. Poison is something you ingest and will make you sick. So I'm gonna use the term venomous. A lot of most people will inter, uh, interchange venomous and poisonous, but uh, it's just, I needed to give you that definition. It's, it's something people who work with reptiles have a, a little quirk about. So we got six venomous snakes in Florida. And what I wanna do is uh, maybe talk to you about, I've already covered this one, about what those are. Now we've got pit vipers in the state and those would be the Eastern diamondback rattlesnake, timber rattlesnake, pygmy rattlesnake, the cottonmouth moccasin and the uh, Southern copperhead. Now in our area, we only have five of these snakes. We do not have copperheads in Nashua County. In fact, the vast majority of Florida does not have copperheads. So when you see a kind of a red and orange mottled snake, that's not a copperhead. That's gonna be a red rat snake. And uh, the copperheads are primarily uh, from the Chattahoochee River, uh, floodplain in the Panhandle area of Florida. And uh, you don't have to worry about them here. The Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, Timber Rattlesnake, Pygmy Rattlesnake, uh, Cottonmouth and Coral Snake, which is not a pit viper. Those do occur in Nassau County. Now, we've got water snakes here, water moccasins and water snakes. Water moccasin, cottonmouth is venomous and they do bite. The best defining issue between these two, I don't have a drawing of it here and I should. If you look at the head of that snake and the lower jaw has striations up and down, very distinct black striations up and down, that's going to be the water snake. If it's got the Zorro pigmentation, a black stripe coming across its face like Zorro, that's going to be your water moccasin. The pupil dilation is usually something you could use, but it depends on the intensity of the light. The cottonmouth uh, pupil can dilate, get bigger. So that's not the best defining. Look for the striations on the lower jaw. Now, the other one we wanna talk about are the coral snakes. And these are elapids, which are related to cobras. They have a different toxicity in their venom. And we have coral snakes in Nassau County. And I've spent a lot of time in the woods in Southeast United States. Um, and I mean a lot of time. I have never seen a live coral snake. They are very secretive, very timid. They avoid people. Uh, so you want to keep it in perspective when we talk about these coral snakes and the related to cobras and so forth. If you see a coral snake, you want to make sure you're just not looking at a scarlet king snake. They both have colorations of red, black, and yellow. And in Florida, you can use this rhyme red and yellow kill a fellow, all right? Or red and yellow, it's like a stop sign. If the yellow and red are touching each other in the border, that's gonna be a coral snake. If they're not, if it's red and black, it's not a coral snake, but red and yellow kill a fellow. That's the easiest way to remember it. 
Or if the nose is black, stay back. That's another one for the coral snake. And like I say, these are timid snakes. They avoid contact with people. And where you're gonna find them is under leaf litter, brush piles, wood piles, and so forth. I've got some data on snake bites that I'm gonna go into here in a little bit. Now, if you encounter a snake and you're not sure if it's venomous or not, that's all right, back away from the snake. Just leave it alone. Snakes are typically avoidant of human beings. They're very fragile animals. Uh, just a second, I have a teaching aid. Let's see if this will show up. Let's see if we can get this up here. I'm not sure, there we go. This is a skeleton <clears throat> of a, a snake. And if you look at it, you're gonna see some very, very fragile rib structures and a back, a spinal, or a spinal column, very fragile. And the skull is very fragile. The bones are very thin. And that means snakes wanna avoid interaction with anything that can hurt them. The idea that snakes are aggressive is fostered by humans. If you back a snake into a corner, he's gonna, it's going to be defensive. Uh, I've seen people step on eastern diamondback rattlesnakes. After the fact, I saw, we saw the snake stepped on it. There was no strike. I've personally been swimming, pulling seine nets in uh, borrow pits, ditches and creeks in South Louisiana and been four feet away from water moccasins. They haven't done anything. I, I cleared a five foot Eastern diamondback off of a walkway, boardwalk in the Okefenokee with a broom. Uh, the snakes don't want to interact with us. They will leave, they will move away uh, a garden hose with a strong jet of water is a great way to move a snake out of an area you don't want. Now, if you back them in a corner, then you're gonna have an issue. And snakes are scared. Uh, you pick a, a non-venomous snake up, most of them will bite. They're defensive because they're scared. And if you pick them up and they bite, you're gonna get scratched. They have very tiny teeth if they're a, a non-venomous snake. And that, and snakes don't brush their teeth, by the way. So their mouth is gonna have a lot of bacteria. You get a bite from a non-venomous snake, scrub it, wash it, watch it. You don't wanna see an infection show up. Snakes have an incredibly important place in our environment. They control rodents really well. And if they're too small to eat an adult rodent, they're looking for the rodent nests and they will take the young rodents out of the population. And uh, in this area, we have a fair number of pine rats and mice that live just about everywhere. And I'll be frank with you, I've, I've got five species of snakes that I've documented in my yard and I'm so grateful to have them because it really keeps the rodent numbers down. Uh, I had someone ask me to help them reload a, relocate a, a black racer. And I don't do relocations, but in this situation, I said, okay, and I picked the black racer up, took it over, put it in my yard. And that per the person that I removed the snake from their house told me about five days later, well, I've I've got mice in my house. That's why that black snake was in the house. It had followed the, the scent of rat and mice urine into the house, and it was just looking for something to eat. So if you've got a, a snake in your garage or in your house, look for the rodents, because that's probably why it's there. Ah, corn snakes. And we have it comparing it to the copperhead. 
like I say, in this area, we don't have the copperheads. If you look at the corn snake it was a photograph here, you see a mottled color with a, a bronzish color and then a brown and a black outline uh, between them. It's a very beautiful snake. Look at the upper right hand corner, that's a cotton mouth. And the, the primary difference between them is if you look at the coloration on the copperhead, you're gonna see the Hershey kiss design. It looks like Hershey kisses on that snake. Can you see them? That would tell you it's a copperhead. But like I said, we don't have that here. If you next time you see a, a rat snake and corn snake and rat snake are interchangeable terms. I don't like the term corn snake. Snakes don't eat corn, they eat rats. And I like it. They get credit for what they do. Uh, these snakes were typically called corn snakes because they would find them around the corn bins where the rats were. So they would call it the corn snake. Let's call it the rat snake. I, I just think that fits the snake better. Water moccasin, okay, I mentioned the Zorro stripe across the eyes, and you can see it here. A young cotton mouth is a lighter color. One of the determining or distinguishing marks with a young cotton mouth is the yellow tip on the tail. And you can see it, a lower left photograph, has a little yellow tail. The other thing, a cotton mouth, if it is threatened, will typically can cock its head back at a strange angle and open its mouth. And the mouth is very distinctly white. And that's how it got the name cotton mouth. Water snake. Now here's where I hope I can show you the striations. The lower left-hand photo is water snake. If you look at his lower jaw, you see there are what six black striations, vertical from you know, lower jaw up toward the, the upper jaw, from the mandible up to the maxilla, you can see them. That's how you'll be able to tell a water snake. And they're very distinct. You should be able to tell them from a distance. <clears throat> Excuse me. The cotton mouth up on the upper right, you can see the zorro. But if you look at the lower jaw, you do not see those striations. And a black racer, he doesn't have the zorro stripe, he doesn't have the lower uh, jaw stripe. And usually you can tell a black racer because he's racing. They don't stick around. They are an incredibly fast snake and they typically are very thin. Water snakes and cottonmouths are a little more bulky, chunky snake. Beneficial snakes. Well, that's what all snakes are actually but uh, the non-venomous, more famous ones, Eastern garter snake, that's up in the top right photograph. That's one of them I've documented in my yard. The salt marsh snake, which you will see around our Spartina marshes and on further down uh, mango and uh, further wetlands south, and the yellow rat snake. That's, a, that's the other one I've documented in my yard. Uh, they're very, very beautiful snake when you look at them. And every single snake that I've encountered except one in my yard was stick, was getting out of it, but did not want to stick around. The only one that stuck around, well, there were two. One was a very, very small ring neck snake, which you can tell it's a brown snake with a yellow ring around its neck. And uh, a uh, <laughs> scarlet snake that my wife gave me a uh, point handed me about three months after we moved here. She found out in the front yard. Now, <clears throat> the chances of being bitten by a venomous snake are very low. You're more likely to die from a dog bite. Hence the photograph. <laughs> Not very many people die from dog bites and hardly anybody dies from a snake bite. Now, I did a little research, and in Florida, we average 400 venomous snake bites a year. And the latest numbers indicate 98% of 
occur because people are messing with the snake. And that means out of 400 snake bites, only eight of the bites are a result of a person not seeing the snake and being struck. Eight out of 400. So it's 300 and what, 92 uh, are from people messing with the snake. And here's how they mess with it. They try to kill the snake. They try to move the snake. They try to handle the snake. So when you get that, here, hold my beer, I'm gonna move that snake or kill it. Don't do that. And I wanna put it in perspective. Last year in Florida, 333 people died from these, okay? Distracted driving, 333 people died. No one died from venomous snake bites in Florida. The last fatal ven uh, venomous snake bite in Florida was in 2014. 333 people died from this, this apparatus here. So we say, leave the snakes alone. When you're driving, leave your cell phone alone. There was, when I was in Vietnam, uh, Armed Forces Network radio would broadcast music. You, you've seen Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam, and he's a disc jockey. Well, that radio station would broadcast uh, public service announcement, announcements for the, for the active, for us military. And there was one that I heard pretty quick and it went like this, leave snakes alone. If you leave snakes alone, snakes will leave you alone. Remember, leave snakes alone. Now that was 52 years ago, I heard that public announcement. And it's true. And it's true in Vietnam where there were cobras and crates and all kinds of venomous snakes. And it's true here. Leave them alone. Now, first aid. When I was, uh, when I was a kid, don't you hate that when somebody starts off with, oh, back when I was a kid. <laughs> Just say, let me pick these up off my table here. When I was a kid in Boy Scouts, we were taught that if you got bit by a, bitten by a venomous snake, you were supposed to immediately apply a tourniquet between the site of the bite and the heart. It's on your wrist, you put it up by the elbow, or above the elbow. It's on your ankle, you put it below your knee, and you tighten it down. Stop the blood, stop the venom from flowing. Once you got the tourniquet in place, <laughs> you were provided with a snake bite kit like this. Okay? And hard for me to make sure you can see this. In this kit is a razor blade, antiseptic, had the tourniquet, and suction cups. And you were supposed to put the tourniquet on, take the, the antiseptic, rub it on the skin, take the razor blade and cut an X on each of the fang marks, and then use the suction cup. Let's see if I can get it up here. There we go. Let's see, where is it? There we go. Ah, there, that's the suction cup. And you squeeze it and supposedly suck the venom out. Well, what they figured out was you weren't sucking any of the venom out. And by cutting the bite, you were actually increasing the likelihood of complications from infection, which can go sepsis and that can kill you. So now they've changed all this. And I've, I've got four different snake bite kits. You can still buy them. You can still buy them, which is tragic because <laughs> the recommended care for a snake bite is immediately call 911. Now, <clears throat> sometimes you might not hardly feel the bite or you might not see any response to the bite. You might not have any swelling, reddening. Don't stop, call 911 
even if you're not having symptoms. Keep the victim calm, move them away from the snake. Do not try to kill, capture, or mess with the snake. You don't want a double, triple bite. Get away from the snake. Snake's gonna probably be getting away from you anyway. And remove any constricting items, rings, watches, tight clothing, necklace, whatever it is, remove it. Because if the swelling starts, it could pinch off more circulation, which could be very problematic in the future. Taylor, did you have a question? Yeah, if I want to repeat it for online so we can hear it. But the uh, one of the questions we had is how long before we start to see the type of symptoms as a result of being bitten by a dentist? How 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 soon after yeah. the bite? Yeah. A lot of times it's immediate. You'll feel an intense pain and the pain will increase, swelling starts, and it's a progression. That's where you have to keep the victim calm and comfortable, remembering the likelihood of death from a venomous snake bite is virtually zero if you get to medical care quickly. But you can see some, some uh, symptoms instantly. Now, I will tell you that there's different, there are different research that says certain number of venomous snake bites are, they don't inject venom, okay? You cannot count on that. You have to get help immediately. Call 911, they'll you'll get you an emergency care there. You get to the hospital, they're gonna be talking with the Center for uh, Poison Control. They'll, want to, they'll monitor uh, all your symptoms. You also would want to make sure you keep the bite area below your heart level. If you're bitten in the ankle, do not raise your ankle above your head for shock. Lower it below your heart. You want to record the time of the bite and make a record of symptoms as they develop. Now, I know one individual that was struck on his forearm, he and his buddies were out catching snakes, rattlesnakes, and he got bitten on it. You know, he got bitten on his forearm. And the puncture wounds were right there. They went to the ER room. He never had a symptom. It was a what they call a dry bite. He was incredibly lucky. The location of that bite, if he had been in Venom, it could have caused very severe consequences. Don't bet that you're going to have a dry bite. Most likely it's envenomated, but don't panic. Okay, just get to where you get some help. Taylor. One other question. Um, we could probably follow up with some really cool resources on first aid mm -hmm. for uh, snake bites, whether it be venomous or non-venomous, but um, can ice, can applications of ice help? Right. Help? Do not apply ice. It will slow the blood in the area. And the, the recommendation is never apply ice or cold packs. You can put a little towel around to protect the area. The key here is called 911. They'll get some medical care people on the phone with you if they need to. They're going to tell you what to do, where to go, and they will be preparing to treat a snake bite. Remember, nobody in Florida dies from these things anymore. It's very rare. It's a very rare event that you're going to die from. Them. Now, here again, I've, I've mentioned don't make an, an X incision on the, to suck the venom out. Don't use ice, don't use heat, don't use electric shock, which is a new one to me. I've never heard of that technique. Uh, don't, do not tourniquet. Don't, and you know, MPO, do not give them any, don't give any alcohol, caffeine, any kind of drugs or other stimulants, nothing by mouth. Get people 
to the medical emergency help. So uh, let's see, I wanted to see if there were other points I forgot. Uh, I've got some notes. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. And if there are questions, uh, you see the chat? Yeah. The question, yeah, if anybody has questions, they can put it in the chat box or QA. Um, some of the questions that we asked them did come from the they did come from the chat box. Uh, one no one has seen a coral snake either from the chat box. I asked people if they seen a coral snake. Yeah. But I have. I've seen coral snakes in Florida, but it was in, always in central Florida. So, Is that, right? that was a day I learned you could walk on air because my foot was coming <laughs> down and I went and I fall where I can step on one. <laughs> yeah. But they were really chill. They actually, coral snakes, they're so, um, from my experience with them, because I haven't just seen one, I've actually seen a lot in a certain area that I work and see them all the time, actually. Right. But, um, the, they're very, they seem to be very docile. Mm -hmm. Like they just kind of slither along. Right. They, they don't do anything. So they're actually, it was really cool to see them. You know, it just wasn't cool to see it when I was about to step yeah, on it. Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> step on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the coral snake has very, very small teeth, but they do have fangs. People say, well, they have to bite and chew. Well, they don't have to bite and chew. They have small fangs and they can envenomate you. Here again, the last bite that I remember reading about from a coral snake was a boy, a young boy who saw a snake and it was pretty. He picked it up and put it in his pocket, took it to school and it bit him. And when he showed what he had, of course, everybody kind of freaked out and called 911, got him some help. Uh, They're a very docile snake, but don't mess with them. Now I know one person in Nassau County who has seen uh, a coral snake on her property here in Nassau County, and, and she's a reliable source. Um, so, I, in fact, I asked her if she ever sees one again, please call me because I want to come see a live coral snake. It's kind of a, I don't know, bucket list item. <laughs> I, I'm, little, I'm strange like that. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Um, one is, uh, do we have Eastern coach whip we, we have, County? yes, we have coach whips. Yes. Um, I haven't seen one, um, but yes, we've got them. Any other questions? No, I don't have anything else. Is that, that's it? Yeah. Okay, well. Thank you all for attending and please be sure to give feedback uh, for the presentation and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Taylor Quinn. All right. Oh, we have one more question just pop up. One more I'm going to throw at you. Are, steak, are snakes more likely to bite when they are shedding? Okay. When snakes are, when snakes are shedding, typically uh, when they shed their skin, they even shed the exterior covering of their eyes and their eyes may change color and they will be technically blind. But uh, I didn't talk about how snakes hunt. Snakes uh, will be visually impaired when they're shedding their skin. So they usually crawl off somewhere and hide because they're more vulnerable and if not, yeah, they're probably more likely to strike, to be honest with you. Uh, and you know, now I think of a whole nother course of information <laughs> <laughs> now that we're done. But uh, anyway, but there's a uh, publication put out by FWC, you want to that right here. It's a, it's a really good publication. And uh, it'll show a lot of a lot of snake species get a lot of good information. And of course, you know you can always Google UF IFAS and put in your issue to interest uh, around snakes, or go to FWC 
And I really encourage you, uh, especially those who are, are a little more nervous or afraid of snakes, seek out the information to put yourself more at ease. Um, anyway, I hope this has helped. And thank you again. So, thank you, Carl, very much for um, uh, thank you, Carl, for leading this discussion and thanks everybody for joining us. We will have, uh, I will um, send out a copy of the presentation to everybody, the link to recording and some other information and, con and, um, and other information related to snakes in Florida, because it is a really cool topic and anybody in Florida at one time, you're end up gonna have contact with a snake and it's always really wise that we're educated about them because you know, once we're educated about them, it allows us to understand them more and respect their role that they have in our ecosystem environment. And we learn that they are actually much better to have around than they are not, um, as long as we just do the, give them the respect that they need. Um, and um, if you're ever by our office, we do have these copies of this, uh, this document available uh, and you can just swing by and pick them up, but it's really handy talking about a lot of the common snakes that you see throughout the state. Um, but anyways, thank you very much, Carl, and thank you everybody for joining us today. We'll follow up with more information in the future. So you all take care. Bye-bye.